Hello, welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at data analysis. So what does that exactly mean exactly? The things that we're going to be looking at are understanding basic concepts of statistics, computer software, uh, SPSS, which we'll talk about later in another one, but selecting the appropriate st uh, statistical test for a particular type of data. Also recognizing and interpreting the output from statistical analysis. Basically, understanding all those things that you've been researching and getting down on paper now is how you're actually going to be able to present this in a clear and rational form. So that is to report statistical output in a concise and appropriate manner. In other words, in a way that it can be un understood by the reader. So some basic terminology we'll be looking at statistics, variable, measurement scale, data, types of data and data analysis. So variable, scale and data. Variable is a characteristic which varies and scale it is, a, is a device on which observations are taken. Data is a set of observations or measurements taken from experiment, survey or external sources of a specific variable using some appropriate measuring scale. And remember, especially when we're talking about doing all of these types of questions, if we're doing surveys, questionnaires, etc., how it can be done in a measurable way. We've got to understand that as well. So it's perhaps quite useful going through this part um, of the course, even before you start preparing your research, so that you can actually understand how you're going to be able to present the research after you've done it. Statistics is generally understood as the subject dealing with number and data. More broadly, it involves activities such as the collection of data from survey, experiments, summarization or management of data, presentations of results in a convincing format, analysis of data or drawing valid inferences from the findings in a way that obviously the person reading it can understand it and it will effectively verify what you are actually saying. So the nature of data. Data is the value you get from observing, measuring, counting, assessing, etc. from an experiment or a survey. Data is either categorical or metric. Categorical data is further divided into nominal and ordinal, whereas metric is discrete and continuous quantitative data. So as we can see, data is divided, categorical, metric, and they are further divided into nominal, ordinal for the categorical discrete data and continuous data for the metric. So just to look at each one, what each one of those means, nominal data, the data is divided into classes or categories. So it could be anything from blood type, sex, causes of disease, rural, whether they're dead or alive, their hair colour and any other kind of uh, one or the other option that it could be. Ordinal data is divided into classes, but be put in meaningful order. So whether they're very satisfied, neutral, unsatisfied, etc. Discrete data, when data is taken from some counting process, for example, number of patients or number of nurses. Obviously, a lot of this is directed more uh, towards medical style, but don't forget that whatever it is you're doing, you're doing research on something effectively of a scientific level, even if it is business orientated. So the methodology is the same. And continuous or quantitative data when taken from some measuring process. So here we have some uh, the scales of measurement. So if we look at nominal for a start, so the basic characteristics, numbers identify and classify objects. Common examples might be social security numbers, numbers of football players or anything like that. Market examples, brand numbers, store types and permissible Statistics, descriptive, percentages and the mode, uh, and the inter interential, um, inferential, sorry, the chi square or binomial test. With ordinal, numbers indicate the relative positions of objects, but not the magnitude of difference between them. Common examples, quality rankings, rankings of teams in a tournament. So in other words, number one might be much, much better than number two, but not much better than number three. So again, there's no magnitude of difference between them. It's, for example, if you were looking at, if there was a, a football match, um, the, the ranking, if somebody scores one goal and it's one zero, then it's first and then second. But if one team scores 25 goals, 
and the other scores none, it's still the same, but there's no difference between them in that sense. So marketing examples, preference rankings, market position, social class, and the permissible statistics, descriptive, percentile and median, inferential, rank order correlation, or the Friedman ANOVA. Right, interval, scale, difference between objects, for example, might be temperature. Market examples, attitudes, opinions, indices. Uh, descriptive permissible statistics, range, mean, standard, etc. So as you can see, we can go through all of those. Uh, the ratios, I think, are most uh, quite well known. Zero point is fixed, ratios of scale, length and weight, age, etc. So the nominal scale, the numbers serve only as labels or tags for identifying classifying objects. When used for identification, there is a strict one-to-one -one correspondence between the numbers and the objects. So it could be something, a particular group is one, another group is two. There's nothing else. It only serves to identify them. The numbers do not reflect the amount of the characteristic possessed by the object. The only permissive operation on the numbers is a nominal scale, is counting. Social security numbers, hockey player numbers, etc. Market research respondents, brands, attributes, stores and other objects. So to look at an ordinal scale, it's a ranking scale in which numbers are ass assigned to objects to indicate the relative extent to which the object possesses some characteristic. So it can determine whether an object has more or less of a characteristic than some other object, but not how much or less any series of numbers can be assigned that preserve the ordered relationships between the objects. So relative position of objects is not the magnitude of difference between them. In addition to the counting operation allowable for nominal scale data, ordinal scales permit the use of statistics based on percentile, quartile or median. So they possess a description, an order, not distance or origin. The interval scale, numerically equal distances on the scale represent equal values in the characteristics being measured. It permits comparison of the difference between objects. The difference between one and two is the same as between two and three. The location of the zero point is not fixed. Both the zero point and the unit of measurements are arbitrary. Everyday temperature scale, attitudinal data obtained on rating scales do not possess origin characteristics, zero in exact measurement. The ratio scale, the high scale that allows to identify objects, rank order of objects and compare intervals or differences. It is also meaningful to compute ratios of scale values, possesses all of the properties of the nominal, ordinal and interval scales. It has an absolute zero point, height, weight, age, money, sales, cost, market share and a number of customers are variable measured on a ratio scale. All stati statistical techniques can be applied to ratio data. So if we now look at data analysis, what does that actually consist of? After collecting the accurate and reliable data successfully by using the appropriate method from the source, what we've been doing up till now, the next step is how to extract the pertinent and useful information buried in the data for further manipulation and interpretation. The process of performing certain calculations and evaluations in order to extract relevant information from data is called data analysis. The data analysis may take several steps to reach certain conclusions. Simple data can be organized very easily, while the complex data requires proper processing. The word processing means that recasting and dealing with data making ready for analysis. So steps in the data analysis, questionnaire checking or data preparation, coding, cleaning up the data and applying the most appropriate tools for analysis. Questionnaire checking. When a questionnaire is returned from the field, it may be unacceptable for several reasons. Parts of the questionnaire may be incomplete. The pattern of responses may indicate that the respondent did not understand or follow the instructions. The responses show little variance. One or more pages may be missing. The questionnaire is received after a pre-established cutoff date. The questionnaire is answered by someone who does not qualify for the participation. Data preparation. Preparation of data file. It's important to convert raw data into a usable data for analysis, coding where it's needed. Simply transform information from questionnaire to computer database. 
the analysis and results will surely depend on the quality of the data. There are possibilities of errors in handling instruments, raw data, transcribing, data entry, assigning codes, values and value labels. Data needs to be cleaned to fulfill the analysis conditions. Coding just means assigning a code, usually a number, to each of the responses to each question. So it might be that a yes is a one and a no is a two. Data cleaning. One of the first steps in analysing data is to clean it of every, any obvious data entry errors. So some outliers, for example, really high or low numbers. An example of this, if we're asking somebody's age and it comes out to, is it 110? It might not mean that. Is it, are they saying 11 or are they saying 10? Value entered maybe doesn't exist for that particular variable. For example, somebody enters number two where one is male, one is female. What do they mean by that? Missing values. Maybe they didn't give an answer or was the answer accidentally not entered onto the database? Somebody forgot about it or mis-entered it. May be able to set defined limits when entering data. Prevents entering a two when there's only a one or a zero are acceptable. So when somebody puts it in, it won't allow you to do that. In other words, you already have a list of what the, the respondent answers are acceptable. Univariate data analysis is a useful way to check the quality of the data. In the next presentation, we'll be looking a little bit more closely at SBSS, which is uh, what we're going into. We'll just give you some um, basic details on this at the moment. SPSS statistics is a software package used for logical batched and non-batched statistical analysis. So it's designed specifically for this. Long produced by SPSS Inc. and it was later acquired by IBM 2009. The current versions, well, only mentioned, I think the ones that we've been looking at here are the 2015, but you'll probably find a more up-to-date version now, are officially named IBM SPSS Statistics. Companion products in the same family are used for survey, authoring and deployment. IBM SPSS data collection, data mining, the modeler and text analytics in collaboration and deployment, batch and automated scoring services. The software name originally stood for Statistical Package for the Social Sciences, reflecting the original market, although the software is now popular in other fields as well, including health sciences and marketing basically anywhere where large amounts of data is being collected. So this is one of the one of the reasons why we, we have the older version. It's normally quite easy to get a trial version of the older version uh, that's free. So that can be quite useful for um, students. OK, so that's all we're going to cover for today. And we will go briefly over this um, software package in the next presentation. OK, thank you.